نعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا حاجه له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, all praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him. We seek His aid and His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils inside of us and from our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one and he has no partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger to the whole of mankind. My respected brothers in Islam, it would not be an exaggeration to say that our whole religion is predicated and based upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran is revealed upon his blessed and noble tongue. And it is explained by his blessed and noble sunnah. Our Islam as we know it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the khutbah today, I want to inshallah talk about our noble prophet. And in the first khutbah, the importance of following him as an example in every single thing. We are told in Quran, "Audo billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim, Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim." La kada kana lakum fi Rasulillahi uswatun hasana, uswatun hasana li man kana yarju Allah wa al-yom al-akhir wa dhakr Allah kathira. In this blessed verse in Quran, we are told, "Indeed." In the Messenger of Allah, you have Uswatun Hasana, a beautiful example. But then the verse continues, for who? Whoever hopes in meeting Allah and the last day and does a great deal of dhikr. So Rasulullah is the beautiful and best example. But only those who think about meeting Allah, who think about Yawmul Qiyamah, who do the dhikr of Allah, will truly take him for what he is, which is Uswatun Hasana. And every good quality that you want, you will see it exemplified in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us take a few. Let us begin by looking at his noble character. You would no doubt expect a Prophet of Allah to have the best character after Prophethood. But even before Prophethood, even before Nubuwat, Rasulullah sallallahu had the best character. Imagine the tribes of Quraysh are going to go to war about who would put the black stone back into the wall of the Kaaba. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa walks in, he enters, he arbitrates, they accept it immediately. War will be stopped because of the speech of Rasulullah. He says to them years later, when prophethood has just begun, he says to them, if I was to say to you, there was an army behind that mountain. Would you believe me? They said, yes, you never ever lied to us. Look at his noble character. They would believe an army was coming without seeing it because of the truthfulness and character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before prophethood, he never engaged in any kind of shirk. He never womanized. He never gambled. He never drank. He never abused. He never harmed. These were the norms of society. Everyone was doing these things. He's not yet a prophet of Allah. He never engaged in any of these things. He was Uswatun Hasana. And what can you say of his character after prophethood? Impeccable before and after. So we ask ourselves, what is our character like? This is the whole point. We learn from Rasulullah what is our character like? Are you kind? Are you helpful? Are you dignified? Are you trustworthy? Are you reliable? Do people take you like that? If someone says, what's his character like? Will they describe you in this way? Or will they say, he's mean, he lies, he swears, 
He doesn't break, he breaks his promises. He's rude to his mother. What would they say about our character? This is the point. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa best character. He was uswatun hasana in terms of his family. How you want to know how to deal with family. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine he would stand up to greet his daughter, Fatima radiallahu anha, when she entered the room and she would do likewise. What father stands up to greet his daughter, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Years after the death of his wife, Khadija radiallahu anha, he sees something, some jewelry that reminds himself of her. He bursts into tears. He bursts into tears, crying because of the emotion he had for his blessed wife. Years later, he would sacrifice an animal and he would make sure some of it went to the friends of Khadija radiallahu anha. He would honor his wife even in her death. This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And what of his mother? This is such a wonderful narration. Everyone knows, every child knows that the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa died when he was approximately six years old. He is now an old man in his late fifties and he's going back from Medina to Mecca and he's alongside a caravan and as the caravan is traveling he says to everyone stop here. He goes to one side, he goes to a grave and he starts to cry. And he doesn't just cry, he's weeping and weeping profusely. He's crying so much. The Sahaba said we started to cry when we saw Rasulullah crying. You know, you see someone, you love them so much. You love your friend so much. he's crying. You don't know why he's crying. You start to cry. Rasulullah is weeping, weeping. Umar bin al-Khattab grabs him from behind and says, Ya Rasulullah, why? What made you cry like this? He said, this is the grave of my mother. Subhanallah. So over half a century later, he's weeping. Many of us, we spend our entire lives with our mothers and they leave this dunya and we still can't shed a tear. Where is the, where is the family that Rasulullah Sallallahu exemplified? He was the best in terms of his family. How are we in terms of our family? How are we in terms of our mother and our father? Do we sit with them and speak to them when they're getting old? Or do we push them to one side? Where's their honor and dignity? Where's our relationship with our wives? Where's our children? Are we worried their holidays are starting? What are they going to do? Are they going to learn some Islam? How are we in terms of a family? Rasulullah was uswatun hasana. His whole life he was an example of a da'i. From the minute prophethood was bestowed upon him, in every situation you will see he is guiding people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's either guiding the non-Muslims or he's giving the siha to Muslims. In every situation of the sirah, even in the blessed leaving of this dunya of Rasulullah sallallahu he's giving the siha. He's saying, God, your salah, your salah, as salah, as salah, the prayer, the prayer. God, what your right hands possess. He's mentioning Abu Bakr. He's mentioning Al Ansar. He's saying they were good to me. Be good to them. He's giving the siha in every situation. His whole life is dawah and enjoining good and forbidding evil. What about us? We live in times where Islam is being vilified every single day. Where's our duty and our responsibility for Islam? Are we doing dawah? Are we guiding our family members, our relatives to Islam? Are we looking after our masjid? Are we keeping it clean? Are we turning the lights off to save electricity? Are we, what are we doing in terms of Islam? Or is it just the dunya? The dunya was nothing to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was uswatun hasana in how a Muslim should be for dawah. He was a model. He really was an absolute model in terms of his suffer. His patience is unbelievable. Unbelievable. In so many different situations. Let's look at a couple of examples. We said that Rasulullah sallallahu was the most noble and dignified. Remember, in his city, anything he said they believed in. You know, when you put someone down, the more noble the person is, the harder it is because of his nobility. And we see this. 
We've seen this on the television. We've seen the incident where somebody throws a shoe at a ruler and a prime minister, a president, and the whole world is uproar. How could they treat the ruler in this way? Even though, in the majority of cases, the ruler had no honor anyway. They behave in such a manner, horrible manner. But even so, it's such an incident. Imagine, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the precincts of al kaaba out in the open, and he's doing sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quraysh come, and the leaders and the worst are laughing at him. And they go to the market, and they get the worst of the animal, the worst filth, and they put it on the back of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's in sujood. What are the people saying? And he's hearing their laughter. And his family is there. And his daughter comes and removes it from his back. How is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He has suburb in this situation. Suburb in this challenge. He from his own blessed hands has to bury five of his six children. This is one of the greatest trials for a father to bury a child. May Allah protect us from this trial and tribulation. Rasulullah the Messenger of Allah had to bury so many of his noble children. He وسلم, was thrown out of Mecca. They tried to strangle him. Abu Bakr says, would you kill a man? Because he says, my Lord is Allah. They tried to strangle him. They exiled him from his city. This never happened in a tribal culture. Did Rasulullah complain to Allah? No. Rasulullah وسلم, was uswatun hasana in terms of his sabr and his patience. How are we with our sabr? Somebody says something to you, yeah, let's stand, come on now. You're playing football, somebody trips you up, here you are, shoulder to shoulder. Where's your patience gone? Your child says something to you, you're abusive to them. Somebody else, something bad happens in your life, you break down. Where is the sabr gone? Where is the sabr gone that Rasulullah sallallahu possessed and exemplified so perfectly? He was uswatan hasana in terms of sabr. In terms of selflessness, he was a messenger of Allah, but he was at the service of the whole of mankind. So many examples. Look at one example. One of the most important journeys of Rasulullah sallallahu is the hijrah. When he went from Mecca to Medina, imagine this journey. Look at the stage of the seerah. At this time, his uncle Abu Talib, his protector, has died. His beloved wife and his support, Khadija radiallahu anha, has died. Senior Sahaba like Hamza and Umar radiallahu anhu have gone to Medina. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is right at the end risking his own life and they try to assassinate it. It doesn't matter. He puts his ummah, he puts his nation before himself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the most selfless of people. And today, we live in a society, everyone is so selfish nowadays. Everyone is me, myself and I. You ask somebody a favor, I'm too busy. Someone's relative dies, I can't visit them. Someone is sick, you ignore them. This is society now. Yes, we've got good health system. Yes, we've got good education system. Our moral values are fragmenting and falling. We put ourselves first, we do this all the time. Everywhere we go now, selfish, me, me, me. What was Rasulullah You, you, you. He's exemplified in his life. What's happening is today, we become selfish, Rasulullah was selfless. He was a model example of bringing people together. The first thing he did when he went into Al Madina, he made the famous pact in the house of Anas bin Malik. He got Al Ansar and Muhajirun, and he said, You are the brother of you. You share everything together. And they became brothers for life. He united the people, he united the hearts. In the famous incident of Hudaybiyah, he's going to do Umrah. He's strong now. 12, 1300 people with him. Strong, big people, you know, he can fight. He negotiates a truce with the Quraysh. And the terms of the truce are not favorable for the Muslims. 
they're not favorable. Omar comes up, Omar, Omar is angry. Are you not from the truth? Why have you done this? Rasulullah says, no, this is the right thing. He makes peace between the people. He brings the hearts together. Look at the Muslim world today. We don't know what the word peace means anymore. It's my way or no way. It's my way or it's the gun. This is what we're seeing today. We need to bring the hearts together upon the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where is that going? Rasulullah brought the people together. That was his message. And we can continue, but I want to close with the rahmah and the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The kindness to people. So many incidents. One incident we mentioned. He enters into al makkah He's at the head of a huge army now. SubhanAllah. You know, everyone is watching how he's going to punish these people. Narrations say, he is so humble, he's bowing his head, his face is nearly touching the neck of his camel. This is the humbleness of Rasulullah He enters, Quraysh comes up to them. He says, what shall I do with you now? He, he, he's got every, look how they treat him. Exiled, killed, tortured, mutilated him and his, his family members. Such a bad way. He's got every right to kill them. He says to them, you are free this day, no blame upon you. Amazing, the rahmah, mercy of the Sallallahu And it goes beyond that. This is what's unfathomable. Abu Sufyan, the leader of the Quraysh, it was his wife, who had eaten the heart, tried to eat the heart of the uncle of Rasulullah. He is the leader of the enemy of Islam. Rasulullah doesn't just forgive him. Rasulullah honors him. Rasulullah says, you are safe in your own houses. You are safe if you go in the house of Abu Sufyan. Imagine that. He honors his greatest enemy at this time. This is the rahmah and the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu How are we? in terms of forgiving others. We have family feuds. You didn't go to the marriage of so-and-so. Your cousin didn't marry so-and-so. And we're not going to speak to you forever. And we're only going to go to your funeral. No mercy. No rahmah. Hatred for what? Petty things. We have religious people. They have differences. Now, I'm not speaking to you anymore. Khalas. Where's the deen gone? Out of the window now? Where's your mercy gone? Where's your kindness gone? Rasulullah was a model of Rahmah. And we could continue. And I would say to you one thing. Is there any good quality but that Rasulullah exemplified it and showed it? And is there any bad quality but that Rasulullah warned us and never entered upon it? فاستغفر إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم. My respected brothers in Islam. Now the importance and the rank of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We're told. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا What does this mean? This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels send salam upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, you who believe, send salam upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the angels, the malaika, the millions, and the billions of them, send salam upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at our noble predecessors. Look at the messengers of Allah, the greats of Islam, Sayyidina Adam alayhi wa sallam. Nuh alayhi salam who taught us da'wah. Musa alayhi salam who taught us how to stand up in the face of a tyrant. Ibrahim alayhi salam was a nation in his own right. Ismail alayhi salam participated in building the Kaaba. Isa alayhi salam and all the miracles he came with. All of these anbiya prayed behind 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al-Isra wa miraj They honored Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The previous scriptures make mention of the unlettered prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran, the greatest miracle to be revealed to any of the messengers of Allah was revealed upon the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was explained by the Sunnah of Muhammad Even the Quran and the Sunnah, they honor Rasulullah The rocks and the stones in the famous incident before prophethood of Bahira, he said, I know he's going to be the master of mankind. They asked him how? He said, I see the trees and the stones doing sujood to Muhammad They honor the Prophet Muhammad The disbelievers when they spoke the truth, they had to honor Rasulullah. The famous incident in the Quran, the father of Khalid bin Walid, Al Walid bin Bagheera, one of the greatest disbelievers. He wants to say bad things about Rasulullah. Sallallahu Quran describes it. He says he's a magician. No, no, he's not a magician. He's a soothsayer. No, he's not this. He's a lie. No, he's not this. He frowns when he's truthful. He has to honor, even the non-Muslims of the time have to honor Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The famous incident when the peace is taking place between the Muslims and the Quraysh, Abu Sufyan is here, the king of Rome is here. He sits Abu Sufyan in front of him. He puts the companions of Abu Sufyan behind him. He said, I'm going to ask you about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you lie to me, and your companions behind you shake their heads, telling me that you're lying, I'm going to kill you. Imagine, the king is intelligent. Abu Sufyan has to speak the truth now. Abu Sufyan said, I wanted to lie, but I didn't know if I lied and my companions did something different, the king would kill me. Abu Sufyan spoke truthfully about Muhammad The king of Rome says, if he was here today, I would wash his feet. I would wash the feet of Muhammad sallallahu He honored Rasulullah. And the Sahaba, there is no description of how they honored Rasulullah sallallahu There's no description. If he looked at them, they looked down. They wouldn't look at so much respect. If he spoke, a hush fell over every one of them. When he made wudu, they would fight to grab his water from his wudu, after his wudu. Literally, they would die for Rasulullah sallallahu Literally, in the battle of Uhud, Sahaba come forward, one by one by one by one, shielding Muhammad sallallahu Abu Bakr says so often, may my parents be sacrificed for you, Rasulullah sallallahu In the incident of Hubayb, when he's captured and he's put on the beach, they're going to hang him and he's surrounded by Quraysh. Imagine the scene. He's surrounded by Quraysh and they're going to kill him. And Abu Sufyan says to him, would you not have Muhammad وسلم, in your place now? He looks at them, every one of them. Imagine, man is about to be hanged. He said, I would not wish that a needle pricks the finger of Rasulullah and I am in safety. Imagine that. This is how much they loved Muhammad The Sahaba, they honored him. Historians have said he has had the most influence in the whole of mankind. Imagine, one fifth of the world's population. We live by the command of Muhammad In our Salah, we do the rules, we honor him. In our Adhan, we mention him. Next month Ramadan is coming, start everything is around the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Imagine a fifth of the world's population honoring all the time Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then to cap it all on Yom al when the billions and billions and billions of people are there, literally billions, and everyone is frightened and everyone is running from each other. And the Anbiya of Allah saying, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. Nothing will happen until the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is taken first and raised and entered. This is the rank. 
even on that day of the, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so we conclude the khutbah, my respected brothers in Islam, with perhaps the most question, important question. How then, having said all of this, how do we honor the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And the answer is simple. We go to those people who through their lives and their blood, they demonstrated their love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who is this? A Sahaba. A son of the first three generations, they showed us how to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They showed us. They are role models. They are our example. We follow the Hadith, the Quran of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Did these people come together on one night and make this is the night we're going to remember Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then move on? Did the Sahaba do this? They knew best how to love. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How did they love him? They followed his sunnah in every single detail, and this is shown our love. You love someone when you emulate someone. A boy loves his father. He copies his father down to the smallest thing. He doesn't just spend one day saying, "Yeah, I love my father." No, he copies him in every single thing. This is how we should be showing our love. For Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it can be hard. We're entering the month of Shaban, the month just before Ramadan. What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say? He said there is a month between Rajab and Ramadan, month neglected by the people. It is a month in which the deeds are taken to Allah. I wish that I'm fasting in this month. So we want to follow the Sunnah, want to show our love of the Sunnah. We should be fasting this month. We should be thinking like him, taking his judgment, appearing like him, honoring him, doing durud upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the time. This really is bringing that great individual, the master of mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, into our meager lives. Allahumma ifulna dhanubana wa kafirna nasiyatul. Allahumma kina adab al dunya wa adab al akhirah. اللهم اغفر المؤمن المؤمنات والمسلم المسلمات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا صلاح